knew that we were going to be closing, uh, I started to think, what can I do to still support our artisans and support our community? So immediately I decided to move everything onto our online website. And we already had a website up and running, luckily. And we had a couple of little things on there, but because things that we have in here are one of a kind or small batch, it's just a lot of work to manage both the in-store and the site. And I wasn't really sure how I would handle that alone. I noticed that some of the artists, and speaking of artists myself as a creator in the store too, I was one of these people who didn't really know what to do. You know, I think that we felt confused and, you know, we didn't really have that creative spark that we normally would have. And I saw a lot of the artist friends that I carry in the store also have the same uh, mindset to where they took some time before they created again. I started the shop because we um, have a lot of creative people in the area and we have a small artisan store, but we didn't have anything that carried like um, small batch goods or the really trendy items. Um, and I really felt that I could feature a lot of the local people that we have and give them a place to, you know, get their goods out to the public and hopefully thrive and grow from that. So we feature now a little over 120 artisans and small businesses. Um, about 75% are from West Virginia, so we've grown to, you know, feature other American-made products as well. Uh, a lot of things are one of a kind. Um, a lot of things are, you know, very unique and made by people in your community. Um, so we didn't apply for any of the loans. Uh, I didn't apply for the PPP at the very beginning because my hopes were you know, I can, as a business owner, take my business online and try to thrive and, you know, sustain myself, right? So I wanted to be able to hopefully not apply for that money and that money could go towards a business that wasn't able to do that, like some of our local restaurants or some of our businesses that just didn't have a website capability. I basically didn't take any time off. You know, it was, I knew that it was important to continue doing something. You know, I'm not the type of person to just give up. So for me, it was, okay, how can I build this business over again online? So I really tried to focus, like, who are my artisans that do this as a career? Those are the people that I need to get online first, right? Because they are not getting a paycheck if we're closed. So I would try to focus on those people and getting their products online immediately. And then I would do, you know, a, a couple of different products every day. And just trying to stay organized like that was tough just because, you know, that there's a lot of stuff in the store. You know, there's a lot of little tiny things. And, you know, while we were closed, it was basically a distribution center in here. You know, we had tables set up, we had packaging uh, products out on this, on this floor, you know. So when something was, was ordered, we'd pull it package it, ship it, or pull it, package it, deliver it. I was worried about going online because I was worried that there would be this faceless being there, you know, and people just wouldn't, they wouldn't want to shop with me. They would want to, you know, go somewhere else or, you know, go to a big box store or whatever instead of shopping small, but it was completely the opposite. It was, it was truly impressive. You know, it touched me. It was, I'll never forget it.